Today's episode is brought to you by Me Undies. Me Undies are the undies that I have on me. Also, today we're brought to you by NordVPN. NordVPN is going to save you from all that internet hassle. And because it's the holidays, it's time for Uncommon Goods. We're sponsored by them as well. And let's jump into this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Ghost and Friend Dogs. Friend Dogs in the morning. In the morning. Live, 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 live. Before our recording studio audience, recording. Wake your ass up, it's the next trending in the morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Excited. Whoa. Welcome to an exciting episode of Cox and Crendor. <laughs> there, you were on a streak of doing really well. That was probably the worst one. You know what? It, it comes, it goes. And sometimes I just have to accept that it's, it goes more than it comes. That does not sound right. <laughs> no, after I said it, I realized it's not great. Not great. <laughs> well, how's it going? <laughs> well, it's coming. Um, honestly, I uh, I'm doing great. I am mesmerized by the things I do when I know I shouldn't. So a great example is for years I've said Costco. What a hellscape. What a truly awful demon portal to an alternate reality. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not a fan. But the more we do stuff here in the office and the more you know we're back at it full, full strength, I feel like it's just easier to go to Costco than to order stuff from Amazon and all that. You know what I mean? Or like go to the grocery store. It, it might just be easier to buy stuff in bulk, like uh, yeah. tissues or, you know, soaps or whatever. And so... My parents for some time have been asking, Jesse, Jesse, what do you want for Christmas? What's the thing you want for Christmas? And I'm like, I, mm, I don't really, I don't like I don't need anything. I don't know. It's fine. Just your company's fine. And then finally I was like, can, you know what? You guys can buy me a Costco membership. <laughs> and so my mom said today, Jesse, be up at 9 a.m. We'll be to your apartment and we'll go take you to Costco and get you a membership. Like, okay, <laughs> all right. So I meet them downstairs at 9.15 promptly. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they've been down there for a little bit. But I'd go to the, like, something was wrong with my stomach when I woke up. So I'd go to the bathroom really bad. Yeah. And I went down to the car. The minute I got in the car, stomach started rumbling. I was like, oh, no, it's going to be one of those days. <laughs> so we drive over to Costco. And immediately when we get there, my mom's like, what? It's 9 a.m. There's so many people here. I thought there wouldn't be anyone here at all. This is crazy. <laughs> packed. The lot is packed. The ever, it, like people are in line to get in. The hot dog pizza place, a line already. It's 9 a.m. How on earth is there a line for people trying to get hot dogs? I'll never understand it, but I guess a dollar fifty hot dog is worth its weight and yep. time spent. And so everyone's out there, you know, absolutely crazy. It's it's chaos the minute we pull into the parking lot. My mom decides to park the farthest away from the entrance she can. And I get it. She doesn't want to ding her car. Right. But I'm also just like, oh, no. Oh, no. Am I going to have to find a bathroom in a Costco? Come on, dude. <laughs> this, I can't. So I take my my parents into the Costco. Mom's like, I'm going to go look for this item I need to get. Your dad, he's going to buy you the card for Christmas. I was like, okay. So we go to wait in line. Already my dad is pissed because we have to wait in a line. He, I can already tell he's upset that we're in a line. And then he acts like he doesn't understand it. He's like, why can't I just go talk to this guy right here? I'm like, because there's a line, Dad. And he's like, but I'm directly across from him. It's weird that I'm looking right at this man and I can't go talk to him. And I'm like, right, because there's a line. And the, there's an order. And he's like, right, right. But he's not talking to anybody. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, Dad. So he clearly is upset. And... I'm just like, what's going on with you, man? Why are you? What's happening to you? And he's like, what can I say? The world's in flames, Jesse. Like, what? What does that have to do with right now? What? Like, I'm asking why you can't just wait in line. And he's like, there's war in the Middle East. This country is going to shit. Like, what? What do you? That has nothing to do with the current situation at all. And so, you know, we wait in line. We do our thing. And we get up to the front. And this lady's like, hey, welcome. Hi. And I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? Uh, I am getting a Costco card. She's like, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so there's 50 options. And I'm just like, nope. 
just the cheapest one, please. And she's like, <laughs> okay, but you know, if you do this thing, you get a credit card. I'm like, nope, just the cheapest one, please. She's like, okay, well, for another $6, you can upgrade to the executive. I'm like, nope, just the cheapest one, please. <laughs> She's like, have you considered that we have a business? I'm like, nope, just the cheapest one, please. <laughs> I'm like, my dad's paying for it. And she goes, oh, okay. So I think she just thought I was broke, which mm. ended that conversation. <laughs> and I was like, my dad's paying for it. <laughs> so my dad gives them a card, which apparently they only accept Visa or cash, which is a thing I didn't know. But it now I weird. know. Yeah, they only accept Visa and cash. And so my dad gives the woman his Visa and they're like, okay, great. Um, if you just fill out some of this paperwork. So I had to put in my information so I guess I could have online access to stuff. And my dad was like, all right, I'm going to go find your mom. I'm like, okay, I'll be here. So they go and they take a photo of me and they put it on my card. And then the woman tries to get the card to work, but the card doesn't work. Uh, and so she has to retake a photo of me. And my dad reappears. And the only thing I hear him go is, smile, smile on the camera. And I was like, dad, <laughs> I'm not going to be smiling half the time I come here. Why would I lie? <laughs> if they're trying to recognize my face, they want the non-smile version. Trust me. And But I was like, come on, smile. I'm like, weren't you going to go look for mom? He's like, I gave up. I was like, okay. It had been maybe four minutes. I was like, okay, cool, cool. So I get my card. And as we're leaving, some random dude comes up to me and is like, excuse me, sir. Is this what I get tires? I was like, uh, no, sorry. No, I, I, I honestly don't know. He's like, okay, thank you. And he walked away. My dad looks at me and goes, what that guy want? I'm like, I don't know, man. He's just, I, he maybe thought I worked here because I came behind the counter. I have no, I have no clue. And he's like, oh, I thought I was trying to sell you something. I'm like, what do you think he was trying to sell? He's like, I don't know, drugs, bombs, who knows? <laughs> and I was like, I can't tell if that is racist or what like i don't know what's going on right now i was like so i, I went i literally went like dad grow up and he goes you're no fun I'm like what do you what do you mean <laughs> so we we go to find my mom who was shopping somewhere and i'm like we should check we should 100 check out the checkout lanes because it's been long enough that if she was going for one thing she's definitely in those long ass checkout lines Let's just go there. My dad's like, no, no, I know where she is. So, of course, I follow my dad all the way to the back where all the chickens and the things are. And he's looking around for her. I'm like, I'm telling you, she's not here. And he's like, oh, she's here. All right. Meanwhile, the entire time he's trying to look, he's also trying to see if there's free snacks. I want 100% know this. He's trying <laughs> to see if there's like free snacks around. And then <laughs> he's dodging carts and getting more angry. And I can tell it's not the kind of anger that's just like, boy. There's a lot of people around. I hate crowded spaces. It's very targeted old man anger where he's just like, all oh, these women with their carts always, <laughs> they don't yeah. care about me. Like it's very, you know, like the same, the exact same thing is when we're driving somewhere. And if anyone pulls in front of him, doesn't matter if it's a man, a, a kid, whatever. He's like, oh, these women drivers. I'm like, that is a dude, dad. What do you do? Anyway, <laughs> he's like, He's like, oh, I don't know. What should we do? And I'm like, let me just text mom. So I'm like, hey, where are you at? And she's like, I'm up front waiting in line. I was like, see, I told you. And he's like, okay. So we try to walk our way out. And again, people are just moving their carts. And he's dodging it like he's playing dodgeball. He's so <laughs> over excited. He's like, whoa, whoa, like dodging. Like, what, are you, what are you doing? It's and so fun. we finally get to the... <laughs> He's not a fan. <laughs> and so we uh, get to the front. We meet my mom. My mom, in fact, didn't buy one thing. She bought three things. And one of the reasons why is, is she was up trying to buy some, you know, like hors d'oeuvres and things for when we get together over Christmas. She loves to do hors d'oeuvres. That's like her thing. And she just saw this old lady buying a bunch of one specific thing that she wasn't even on her radar, but she was like, if she liked it, it must be good. So she bought it. <laughs> I think it was like gyoza or something or like a, a bagolgi gyoza, which is a weird combination. Yep. And uh, she was like, oh my God. And she bought it just cause this lady got like 12 of them. <laughs> She's like, she almost cleaned it out. I had to get it. There was only a few it. left. I had to get them. I was like, well, of course you did. 
<laughs> yeah, and mind you, all of this was happening. I just want to remind everyone, all of this was happening while my stomach was like, we got to find a bathroom, bro, now. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I was just like, mm. <laughs> so I was trying to be the most pleasant version of myself because I was like, the faster we get out of here, the faster I can get home. And here's my own bathroom and like, let's go. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. That was an unpleasant experience. But I now have a Costco card, which means probably this week I'll gather the entire team at the office and be like, yo, it's Costco time. And then we'll just go buy a bunch of stuff and hopefully I won't have to keep buying stuff because it's like, you know, every time we buy things for the office, depending on who comes to the office, great example, if we buy waters and scary game squads at the office, those waters are gone that night. Every water is gone. <laughs> those boys love to drink water and they'll, they'll just disappear. Uh, things like that. Where I'm like, okay, we just got to, we got to plan. <laughs> We got to plan in advance, and I think that's I think that's the objective, and try to save some money in 2024. Yeah, Costco's great for that. Like, if you know you're gonna buy something and use it for a long time, it's like just get it at Costco. So it's gonna be bigger, and you get more of it, and you get it cheaper. I too have become more like an old person the older I get. I'm just like, ah, oh, I can do the digital coupon for an extra fifty cents. This is great. Like, just things like that. You know, I'm just uh, back in the day, you know, like uh, years ago, I'd be like, oh, I'm eating like this fancy thing. And like, I'm going to try this. I'm cool. And now I'm just like, nope, not now. I'm just now I'm just about saving money. I think a lot of people have that and then they get it out of their system. Yeah. Like they have a wow, I can't wait to try this thing or do this thing. But once you do, you realize it isn't that much better. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> like, it's fun to do. Yeah. And it, it's great. But. It, it, there definitely is a diminishing return on all that stuff. Like I went out and got a great dinner, but if you have too many great dinners, it ruins great dinners for you. It's true. Or like I went on vacation. I went on all these vacations. Yeah. Okay. Well now you kind of ruin the concept of a vacation. That reminds me of like my Michelin star thing. Like the first time I was like greatest meal I ever had. And then the one time you couldn't make it, we went, I was like, it's not as good. I was like this. I'd rather, I'd rather just go to a normal restaurant. Other That's what I'm saying. I was like, well, I don't want to do this again now. <laughs> If you, if you pay a lot for a great meal and it's not great, then it makes you never want to do that again. Yeah. You're like, well, why would I ever do this again? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the whole point is you're supposed it's supposed to be an experience. Yeah. Like, what's, what's great about LA is a lot of chefs, I don't know if this is the thing a lot of Michelin star chefs do, but I feel like they should. In LA, there's a dude who has, it's like, it's like a two-star restaurant, and it is amazing. It's multi-floored, and for each... Uh, course in the meal you go up a different level oh on the, I see. very cool high concept but because it can only do so many people across the street is sort of like a cafe that does roughly the same equivalent <laughs> and it's just as good if not better you can sit outside and chill and you're not paying ridiculous pretentious prices you're just going to a cafe yeah and i'm like okay so it's the exact same concept just simplified and I'm not getting like no weird foams were put inside a mouth that looks like a fish that then you suck. None of that, none of that <laughs> stuff. Literally. It's like, uh, yeah, okay. Here's your avocado toast, but it's delicious. Speaking That's of which, I want. Uh, speaking of food, how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, Thanksgiving was great. Once again, my parents and I went out and <laughs> got Thanksgiving at a restaurant. It was great. We uh, had turkey and stuffing and uh, green beans and Brussels sprouts and a delicious sweet potato uh, mash of some sort. Um, that was great. And then, uh, yeah, then we had like a little pumpkin pie dessert thing. It was lovely. Huh. And you know what? When you don't have to cook it, it's great. I feel like one day I should do a Friendsgiving and invite friends over and we just like try to cook a meal. I think that'd be funny just in the concept. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm totally okay with a good. We went and we ate, and then we came back to my parents' house and watched the uh, dog show that is every Thanksgiving. And I laughed my ass off at every dog that looked like a rat and or was furry for no reason. <laughs> like <laughs> there was one dog that was maybe the smallest dog I've ever seen, but was ninety percent fur, just like poofy fur. That thing, it won one of the awards, so I guess it's a good dog. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we watched the dog show, and we sat around, and then 
I realized my parent's dog doesn't actually like me, but only uses me as a springboard to jump up on to taller things. I was sitting there, <laughs> and then this dog comes up and sits on my lap, but not really. It then looks around and then sees, oh, I can jump to a higher advantage point from Jesse. And then did it multiple times. And I was like, cool, thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for stopping by. So this idiot's yeah, the, a springboard. Absolutely. <laughs> that dog was just like, hold on now. I can actually get up higher. Yeah. Never stuck around me, never cared. Would come up to me with little like puppy dog eyes, like, can I please sit on you? I'm like, all right. And then no, jump up and then be like, all right, where can I jump to now? What a <laughs> what a mean dog. Um, my parents are like, we love Maxine. She's lovely. What a wonderful dog. Like that dog is a, an eagle could swoop down and take that dog away. <laughs> this dog is rat size. A little tiny rat dog. It's probably smaller than my cat. Um, I would say roughly the same size. Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah. Except, except your cat is like poofy. This dog is skin and bones. This uh, dog, <laughs> its legs look like chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> They're so like chicken wings have more meat than the legs. It's crazy. I just think of a chicken dog walking around. Apparently, they were saying during the dog show that this particular dog is used to hunt rats, and I was like, it makes perfect sense. This is a little rat dog. This dog <laughs> is like, I can get inside the walls. Like, oh yeah. No, my parents <laughs> love their dog. They're like, she's so smart. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Although she did, she did completely avoid me and then use me as a springboard to get to higher places, which is pretty smart. <laughs> that is pretty smart. Mm. Um, yeah, so that was my Thanksgiving. What did you do? So speaking of cooking, we cooked. Hell, so did you have family over? Was that the point? Yes, it was okay. uh, my grandma, my aunt, and my parents. So it was I like a that. smaller thing. So we didn't, it was only for like, the six of us, but it's still a lot of cooking. So we like made a turkey. We had like sweet potatoes. We had mashed potatoes. We had uh, asparagus with garlic. Uh, we had my mom made green bean casserole. Cause my dad only likes the way she makes it. The other year we did it where I made like, uh, or no, we like we both made like fresh green bean casserole. Like we actually made like mushroom sauce. With like real mushrooms and like cream, and then we like fried onions and did all these things. And I was like, dude, this tastes amazing. It tastes like real green bean casserole, with like mushroom. And then my dad was like, I don't know. Doesn't taste like the the good old one, you know? So it is <laughs> it is a flavor, and I know exactly what your dad means, mm -hmm. but yours sounds delicious. But I get it. It's like yeah. my mom with with the cranberry sauce. Yes. If it's from the can, she loves it. But if it's like some dude made a cranberry sauce, she's like, it's not the same. That's also my dad. I mean, that's like me with cherry pies. I don't, if you make a cherry pie where like you get the cherries and you do, it's not as good as that crappy canned, like neon red. <laughs> <laughs> that's the shit. I'm like, that's, that's delicious. That's what a pie is to me. And so I get it. I absolutely get it. Speaking of the cranberry sauce, we made cranberry sauce, which every year I make it, it's the Gordon Ramsay cranberry sauce. So if you haven't seen it, Literally just look up Gordon Ramsay cranberry sauce. I'm doing sauce. it right now. He makes it for Christmas. And you you pretty much you put sugar in a pan and then you melt you like caramelize it. And then you put in like star anise and cardamom. And then you put the cranberries in that, and the caramel like melts the cranberries essentially and cooks them. And then you put on like some orange zest and you put on like you squeeze the orange into it, like salt, pepper, and then that's pretty much it. Like it's very simple. But it tastes great. Uh, and so I love it. But uh, last year, we got a canned cranberry sauce for my dad. And he didn't even eat it. He just ate the one we made. And I was like, well, why do you even? <laughs> so we didn't even get that this I year. I mean, you like, want him you'll... over. That's a, that's a win. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So he ate that. <laughs> Listen, it's I think it's great. I also love Gordon Ramsay and that. He's like salt and pepper. He's like, it's so important. So important. You season. I just and it's got like doo 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 doo. It's like happy Christmas music in the background. Great video, great recipe. So wait, so do the cranberries? What do, you, do they have? Pits and stuff in them. How does that work? Mm mm. Cranberries. I mean, I'll be honest. I've never eaten <laughs> a cranberry <laughs> non cooked. Does that make any sense? Or in juice form. I love cranberry juice, but like okay. I haven't. 
had a cranberry cranberry. It's kind right. of like when you have, um, oh, what the hell is that called? All the kids love it. Uh, <laughs> right? Pomegranates. Yeah. Uh, like pomegranates, pomegranate yeah. juice is delicious. Pomegranate flavored things are delicious, but an actual pomegranate, like, it's hard as hell to eat. I'm like, no, nah, I'm over it. <laughs> I don't need well, to eat this. I mean, I think that's how you, when you cook it, it becomes very, like, easy to eat, obviously. But, like, it's like, it's more like a jelly. Like, you get that cranberry sauce texture. It's very, like, jelly like, but. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's just, it's like a berry. It's like a blueberry almost, but like a very tart, more solidified blueberry, I guess. I don't know. Uh, oh. but it, it's great. I love it. And then I think we made a couple other things, but oh yeah, stuffing. Toaster Woman made the stuffing. Which awesome. What kind of stuffing does toast make? Uh it was another we pretty much got all our recipes from YouTube. All the like chef people on YouTube. There's a lot of them. Uh damn. I, I went to just to interrupt. I went to the website and uh there's a bottom thing that says next, and I was like what could possibly be the next thing past cranberry? They got blue cheese dip. I love blue cheese. I do this, too. I, oh my god, a blue cheese dip? Okay, <laughs> okay, Gordon. And it looks super easy to make. And I'm like, oh my god. All right, I gotta stop looking yeah. at this. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, Gordon Ramsay's got some banger recipes. But there's a lot of good recipes out there. Um. So yeah, we cooked that. Went great. Everything went well. And then uh, we pretty much were eating leftovers, and then we got a we got a fun story. So <laughs> yesterday, or what, the day after Thanksgiving, that night, we were like, you know what, we're we're tired of eating leftovers. Didn't really want to cook anything, so we went and got McDonald's. Okay, so sure. apparently the day after Thanksgiving is Friendsgiving, right? Yeah. So went to McDonald's and they had the McRib and I was like, dude, I get my yearly McRib, right? So <laughs> we go there and we go to the drive through and they're like, oh, the, the drive through is not working. You got to come inside. And I'm like, sure. OK, mind you, this is like midnight. So <laughs> I'm like, whatever. <laughs> so go inside and it is like it's like a high school in there. Like it's just three packs of just high schoolers. There's like a like a family in there. There's like a couple families, <laughs> and then like uh just some random like college kids or whatever. And I swear to God, this one girl <laughs> was I don't even know if she was like drunk, high, both. Yeah, I was gonna say like, maybe <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah, but she was like stumbling around. <laughs> And she was like, dude, oh my god, I am so excited for McNuggets. And then she like sat on the floor. <laughs> she just sat on the floor, and then her friends just like, dude, get up. What are you doing? And she's like, I'm on the floor. I'm breaking in my mom's boots. And she's wearing these like white boots. And she's like, I'm breaking them in. And then she's like, where's my zins? And I was like, what zins? the hell is a zin? So I looked it up. Apparently it's like oral tobacco. Or uh, not to, but like nicotine, like oral nicotine. Is that like Zeus or whatever? What the hell? Every time we went overseas, all the kids from Norway would have like some like snus, snus. Is that the name of it? Snus. Snus. A smokeless, moist powder tobacco pouch from Sweden. Oh, sorry, 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 Norway. I mean, I guess <laughs> Norwegians could use it too. Um, mm -hmm. You place under your top lip. Such as mint and wintergreen flavors. You don't burn it, and you don't have to spit when you use it. Yeah, I think it's sure. it's uh, Zin is literally nicotine pouch, smoke free, spit free. It's like same thing. Yeah, all uh, right. Snooze like loose. I, you know, snooze is better. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, I think Zin is whatever. Better. What, the, what is that other <laughs> zinc? No, that's uh, trash. Apparently, they are not approved by the FDA. Yeah, uh, that sounds correct. <laughs> And it's just, I guess everybody's doing that now, so cool. Uh, so she was like, my Zins. And then she like asked some like high school kid. He looked like high school. She's like, can you open this? And he was like, uh, okay. <laughs> and he like opened it up. Then she was like, we're going to sit at your table. And they like just sat down at like these like five high school guys table. And they're just like, bro, what? <laughs> and then I was like, just standing there. And this, like, one dude who's, like, he looked like, um, 
You know the guy, the cop guy from Stranger Things? Yes. With the beard? He literally looked like him, and he just, like, came in alone. He got his food, and he literally got his food. And he, as he was leaving, he's like, everybody, happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe. <laughs> and then everybody just looked over like, what? Okay, whatever. <laughs> and then this girl was just like, oh, my God, I can't wait for my McNuggets. And then... They start giving out food. Let me let me ask one more question. Follow up mm -hmm. again. What time was this? Midnight. And why were you there? Didn't want to cook dinner. Tired of leftovers. Well, I also wanted to make a rib. I, the drive I, I, also was got, I also got to make rib this week. All right. Anyway, <laughs> please continue. <laughs> oh my god, how was it? Uh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> It, in terms it was of, McRib. In so, terms of like McRib quality, was it a good quality McRib? So here's the thing. Uh, as is tradition, mm -hmm. I drove past McDonald's, looked at it, and was like, oh, damn, for Cox and Crender. So I did a Yui. Mm -hmm. I like, <laughs> you turned back to McDonald's, and I was like, I got to get a McCox and Crendor. So mm -hmm. I got the two main ingredients, that, that sweet, sweet McRib and a lovely McDouble. Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw that, you know, they didn't have jalapenos or whatever, but it was fine. It didn't matter. Right. I was living. And I went to go combine them, but I was like, I guess I'll taste what the McRib tastes like without this monstrosity of a hell beast we've created. Uh, it's it's solidly mediocre. It's, <laughs> I, I was not impressed at yeah. all. <laughs> um, but when you combine the two, it becomes more of an event than a yeah. food and so at that point i didn't care <laughs> it is and it was like how event. on earth do i eat this but other <laughs> than that <laughs> you know it's not something i ever want to do anytime soon again right yeah usually i only have one to two a year that's like it is more of an event i'm like it's the mcrib time and then i'm like all right <laughs> mcrib time is over <laughs> yeah once was enough i'm good <laughs> um but then they got a bag of food and the one of the guys at like that table, so he's like looking and he's like, Wait, It is such a weird thing to say they got a bag of food. <laughs> they got a bag of they food. They got a bag of food. Who knows what's inside? So it was literally like almost my order. It had everything but the McRib in it. So then he was like, uh and he's like, Wait, who ordered this? And then the one girl's like, I ordered cheeseburger. And then the one girl's like, <laughs> I had McNuggets. Are those McNuggets? And then he's like, no. And then he like looked around and he was like, is this your food? And I went and looked and I'm like, uh, I, it's got everything I had except the McRib. And then I was like, so I don't think it is. And he's like, uh, and then the one girl's like, hold on. I got cheeseburgers. Give me that. She's like grabs the bag. <laughs> and then he was like, sorry, I have to like, we're like dealing with them. And I was like, it's good. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, sorry we're dealing with sorry <laughs> we're dealing with them so i just like walk away and the other girl that's like the zin girl she's just like i have a boyfriend and like he's really cool she just said that out of nowhere like nobody asked nobody said she just said that and everyone was like uh, okay <laughs> that's cool man <laughs> she screams like i have got main character energy is Very like, much, yeah. In her mind, you all were there to serve her story. Yeah. They they also had those uh, kiosks you can order at, like the you just order at a screen, and she ordered at that, but while sitting on the floor. You so, know, <laughs> you know, as you do. <laughs> yeah, as you do. Um, so then finally, the lady behind the counter was like, what did you order? And I was like, this is my order. And she's like, oh, yeah, it's right here. And then she, they like made it. And then I left. <laughs> that, was, that was that. Yeah, they made it and so you left. Like, but or I forgot to mention, as I was as they were handing me mine, the that girl came up to the counter and she literally was like, I could go I could go into the kitchen. I could go into the McDonald's kitchen right now. She's like she said that out loud. She needs someone to <laughs> like hold her back. So her friend like, was there and she's stop. like, I want to do that. So that was her friend holding her back. That's a good She's, friend. Yeah, that's a good friend. <laughs> but her friend also, I looked at, I looked like glanced over and saw her eyes. She was not in a sober <laughs> state. Those eyes were gone. Uh, I just think it's so funny that you were like, you know what? It's midnight. I'm going to go to McDonald's. The, the <laughs> least sane option I've ever heard. <laughs> it was the McRib. 
I mean, I get what what it was. Yeah. It's just, that's a, I mean, you know, you didn't have so, to do it. <laughs> so then the girl, she's like, yeah, I'm not going to go in the kitchen. It's it's friends giving. It's booze giving. You guys, everybody drinking tonight. It's friends giving. <laughs> Nobody responded. Uh, and then the lady behind the counter is just like, uh, the McNugget and a whatever she got. And she's like, oh my God, that's mine. Thank you so much. And she just took it and went and sat down. I, you know what? I hope that did the trick. I hope that she just feels so much better. Like I want yeah. her to be her best self because yeah. that poor woman, that sounds like a mess. Yeah, she is. She is definitely a mess. I don't know how the next day was either. It's gotta be. It's gotta I mean, be something. Considering the way she was acting, I imagine she's like twenty-two. So I would assume yeah. the next day she woke up just fine because twenty year olds <laughs> yeah, yeah. have incredible just fine skills. That's true. Yeah. Um, except me when I was twenty two, of course. Well, I mean <laughs> I was you probably better. didn't go out and get greasy food the night before. She was planning ahead. That's true. That's pretty smart. That's true. Actually, you know what? I think I was fine. Occasionally I'd have like some bad like heartburn or something. 25 was when it started. It's all starts downhill hopping from there. On a sled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so speaking of which, then at the doctor's office, uh, Toaster Woman was getting her like allergy uh, appointment thing, and there's this old man <laughs> with his wife an old man at the allergy office, and wrote this down. And I quote: His wife was like. Did you drink soup? And he goes, yeah, it was Campbell's and it tasted bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, but it was low sodium. And he goes, it tasted like dishwater. And she you know said, what? it was low sodium. <laughs> maybe that man's tried to tell us something. I, I, maybe the low sodium tastes like dishwater. It does, apparently. <laughs> it's the, I mean, I haven't tried it. Here's the thing, low sodium and Campbell's, that's still probably like high sodium overall. Too high. Yeah. yeah, but it's also there's so many preservatives and things they have to keep in that to, you know, yeah. keep it shelf stable. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say though, that old man needs to get on the Jesse Cox Campbell's train. Every time I'm there, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know if the taste palettes of Americans have changed, but next time at the grocery store, and this may just be an LA thing, mm -hmm. maybe a West Coast or a Southwest thing, I don't know. They have multiple varieties of soups that are now extra spicy. Mm. So they've got chicken noodle, which is what I like. I like the chicken noodle one. It's spicy. It's delicious. Right. Uh, it's probably not great for you, but I like it. They have chowders and stews, and, and now it's all like extra spicy. And they even have one that's like Carolina Reaper flavor. And I tried that one. Too hot to enjoy. <laughs> I can eat it, but it's too hot to enjoy. Right. And so I don't know, like, it's weird that that's the thing that's happening. It's only I've only seen it in the last couple months, but I will say it got me to buy Campbell's soup. <laughs> well, look at that. They got you. That's their they whole They got me. That's all they really care about, honestly. I'm not buying a lot of it. I'll usually like from the grocery store I'll buy one can of Campbell's soup. But I'm like, you know what? If one day I need a meal but I'm not I don't want to do anything, it's a, it's a winner. Yeah. <laughs> um so there was that old man. Then, I like him. Uh, I started selling my Crocky plush. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've seen that. Yep. Here comes the shameless plug. Yeah, no, I've definitely plug. seen it. Over yeah. on makeship.com slash product slash Crocky dash plush. <laughs> I am slash selling Crocky, crocky plush. plush. <laughs> <laughs> Links in the description, potentially. Uh, <laughs> I've got <laughs> 16 days, 12 hours to hit 200 sold so that he gets funded. Currently, we're at 74. So we're almost halfway there. We're at 37%. Plenty of time. Please buy it. I believe. Uh, <laughs> Please buy it. <laughs> He's great. I don't know if you saw. I made a video um, on my YouTube channel called The Crocky Plush Will Change Your Life Cren Shopping Network Special. You know what? You're finally doing it. You're finally in your stride. Yep. If you watch that video, I think I will convince you to buy it. It is a fantastic video. It's pretending to be QVC Home Shopping Network. And it's it's really great stuff. I actually put it's, more effort fantastic. into that than I normally do anything I do. Well, there's your problem. You just made a video that was like, I got a plush. Go buy it. Thanks. Well, and left. I still have a shitty green screen and everything happening. It's it's high quality, low quality. 
at the same uh, time. You know what? All right. I'll take yeah. it. High quality, low quality, is a br- that's a brand right there. That is a brand. Mm-hmm. Um, then, the stories are continuing. I wrote down a lot this week. Then, <laughs> I wrote uh, wrote down about this tweet I made. This tweet, like, blew up. Everybody was loving this. I said, I still think about the Cox and Crendor from years ago about how some people don't have inner monologues and how I don't understand it. And so, I wanted to clarify with you. Do you have an oh, no. inner monologue? Um, I would assume yes. I don't have, I can't visualize things, visualize things. Okay. But you have like a voice in your head where you're just like in your head, like, should I do this? Okay. I'll do that. Um, sometimes, I mean, it depends on the situation. If I'm, uh, if I have time to think something over, I will think something over. Um, but if it's like in the spur, if you know, for example, this show, right. I have not thought through a thing I've said. Everything I've said has come out of my mouth with zero thought behind it. And I will also forget everything I said. I couldn't tell you what we talked about 10 minutes ago. Costco. See? (laughs) I think I do it half the time. Half the time I'm able to do that. The other half, I have to think about everything. I mean, I probably should think about stuff more, to be honest, but... uh, I try to be a little spur in the spur of the moment kind of thing where I just want to say, here's the first thing I thought of. Cause it always works out better that way. Yeah. But um, when it comes to other things, like if I have to write an email or if I have to, you know, talk to some, like, okay, I got to be a boss for a minute. Like that kind of stuff. I'll think through what I want to say. Okay. I'll but like, what about I'll, say you're like driving in a car. Okay. You're yeah. driving in the car. Are you thinking like, let's see, what am I going to do today? Am I going to do this? Do I got to talk? Like, are you thinking that out in your head? I don't know if (laughs) I get flashes of like, well, okay, I'll go do this. But I don't sit there and think it out. If you really want to know what's going on in my head, 90% of the time, I'm humming a tune. (laughs) (laughs) I'm literally just like silently whistling in my head. It's like. I got nothing going on there, dude. I'm letting you know. I might be (laughs) the simplest man who ever lived on planet Earth. That's insane to me. That's like actually insane. (laughs) I'm pretty sure it's ADD or some shit. Like, it's ADHD. Like, I'm letting you know. I I acknowledge it's not normal. I realize I'm an outlier in society. And it's... it's, uh, I don't like it, necessarily. On this website, which... I don't know if it's true or not, but apparently... A bunch of websites are saying it. it says 30 to 50 percent of people don't have internal monologues. So you might just be, I don't even think it's that unusual. I think it's like just 30 to 50 percent of people. It's pretty much half. Well, that makes me right? feel better. Um, but also makes me scared because if I, if the, most of the world is exactly like me, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, it says it's common for writers and artists to have conversations with themselves, which is why. I am a more of like a creative person. So I'm like, maybe it's like the creative part of the brain. You have more like internal dialogue. Like I, it's crazy because like I talk to myself in my head nonstop. Like literally uh, I, not. I Unless I'm like talking right now, like I am, then I'm not talking to myself. But like if I'm stuck, I like talk to myself in my head. I most certainly do not. That's crazy. Um, but also... <laughs> It could be because of some sort of mental deficiency on my part where I require constant stimulation. So I don't have the downtime to talk to myself. Maybe if I talk to myself in my head, I discover like dark truths about, like, I don't know. But (laughs) a great example is, you know, like at night, some people will lay in bed quietly, right? right? I will have a podcast on every single night. Um, And I will listen to the podcast and then fall asleep. And I don't have any sort of like, well, tomorrow will be another day, Jesse. You gotta, I just don't. I don't. Yeah, but if you um, didn't have the podcast on, would that be occurring? And you just don't want uh, it to. The only times, this is, all right, this is some inside baseball, but I don't care because <laughs> it's true and we're talking. Um, the only time I don't play a podcast is if someone's spending the night, wink, wink, and I don't play anything then. And usually okay. just go to bed in silence because I'm trying to respect the other person, right? And I don't, right. you know, sometimes it's like, well, I don't know what they want to listen to or what they're doing, and they seem very tired, so whatever. Uh, and in that case, I will, you know, go to bed 
without something on. But I, and in this case, absolutely, I will sit there. But I, but it won't be good conversations in my head. It'll be like, <sighs> I'm hot. Do I take this cover off? What are they going to think if I just pull the covers off and I'm just laying here? <laughs> so you like doing that it. Kind of, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm letting you know I 100 percent do. Yeah. But I think because of, I don't know. It, it it's always something in your childhood, right? I, right? I don't know what it is, but I'm sure at some point in my life as a kid or as a teenager in high school or something, something sparked where I don't like silence. And mm -hmm. it could be because of then I start talking to myself and I get in my head. And if I just make it noisy, I won't get in my head and start overthinking things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I honestly have no clue. Well, I also don't like silence, but I like white noise. But I've heard that white noise actually makes you think better. Or, like, it helps your brain more. I think that's the same concept as, um, like, ASMR stuff. Not yeah. the ASMR that's like, hello, today we're going to make pancakes. <laughs> the ASMR stuff was like someone flicking like this yeah. over and over and over again. Apparently that's supposed to help you in some way. I don't know that that's true, but I guess that helps you focus. I mean, you could even say that having music on in the background is a form of ASMR. That's right? true, but I messed up because this past week... When I was working, I was playing music, and the music just got me. I was so caught up in the jams that I started, like, air drumming <laughs> instead of writing. <laughs> I was like, I got a script to write. <laughs> yeah, I was not paying attention. Um, yeah, so that's it. I mean, that means you do have it. It's almost like you just don't want to access it. because Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, it, and I don't know why. I mean, I do sometimes where, you know, if I need to, like, a great example is today I was like, oh, I got to write this email. Oh, my God. All right. Well, I got to get this done because if I do the show with Crendor, I'll forget to do it afterwards. So, all right. Like, I'll, all right. I'll have that, that conversation. But I won't, like, I cannot picture, you know, when when I we were talking about what we ate for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. I can't mentally focus hard enough to see the like Thanksgiving plate that was in front of me. Like mm. I know it was on it because I ate it, but I can't re-visualize what it was. So you can't picture it. Can you picture like anything? No, but I can explain it to you because I know what it was because I have the recognition of what it was. Does that make any sense? Like yes. I, I, I can't visualize the plate, but. I know what was on the plate and I know what in, what in order, like what in order it was. And I know what like a slice of turkey looks like, right? Right. So I could put it back together for you and be pretty accurate, I think. But I don't, I, I don't see it in my head and then immediately recreate it on paper, for example. I couldn't do that. Yeah. I'd be lying to you if I was like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what it looks like. It'd just be <laughs> me faking it and being like, yep, that's the approximate of what it was. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can do that. It like varies. It's like it's like a varying scale. Sometimes I can like not picture stuff that well, and then other times I have like 4K. Like I, there's times, especially when I'm going to bed, and I'm just like laying there, I can like see stuff in 4K. Like I'm dreaming almost. Like not even dream. Like like super high detail dreaming. Like it's pretty insane. You know what? I actually there's an exception to this. There's an okay. exception to this rule. <laughs> there's one thing that I can vividly see in my head, and I think it's because it's unattainable. In college, again, this is uh, probably too much inside baseball. In college, when I moved uh, out of the dorms and into a house with a bunch of friends, I was the only guy with a computer at the time. And so they all wanted to use my computer. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's fine. And I remember I had found, and looking back now, it's probably the lowest qualities. I found, <laughs> let's say, a video of an erotic nature. <laughs> all right. That I can see in I'm, my eyes are closed <laughs> and I can see it right now. Yep. There was like a neon sign in the background and it was like these three ladies and they were just like going to town. And here's the thing. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I don't remember any of the names of the people in it. I have no clue. But I do know that if I were to find it now, it'd be smaller than than like 120p. It is going to have to be the low because that would have been. 2002 oh yeah so it would've, like Dial that would have been that would have been yeah that would have been bad <laughs> but it was just, and i like it was the best thing i'd ever seen it was the hottest 
most amazing video I've ever seen. <laughs> and then my all those damn guys in my house got uh, one day I just went to my computer and when I went to go turn it on, 50 pop-ups appeared. <laughs> they filled my computer with so many viruses that I had to uninstall I had to just remove everything. Damn. I had to, I, I had to put in the Windows disk <laughs> and and write everything back to zeros and ones in order to save the computer. And I was so <laughs> mad because I couldn't access anything. It's gone, dude. It's gone. I don't know where it's at except it's in my brain. I'm like one of those <laughs> sci-fi movie guys who's like, he has the last Bible. Well, where does he have it? <laughs> it's all up here. Like that's that's me, but with that video. It exists permanently in my head, and I'll never be able to find it again. But I think about it every so often, like, man, I wish I had that video. You know, it's just like <laughs> that now it's gone. <laughs> that's gonna be a quote. In like episode that, 500, it's like he has the last <laughs> Bible. It's all up here. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And I just, it, it, it's one of those things that, that I absolutely might have consumed all my memory trying to retain. <laughs> the, I, I can, I'm, I'm not even joking. Right now I'm looking at this. I'm looking at my computer screen, listening to you. And I <laughs> still have a vi like perfect four by three box image of what it is in my head. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, did I really forego all other knowledge storing and <laughs> just kept that up there? Worth it, by the way. Just, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that is... I did not expect that, but I also... <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah that was... Uh, <laughs> it broke my heart. I was so mad. I was like... Guys, I can't believe you did this. My computer. And they're like, sorry, dude. Like, we know you worked hard on that CSGO account. And I was like, yeah, 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 CSGO. Yeah, that's what I meant. See, the thing is, like, when they tell you, you know, the thing where they're like, envision an apple, right? I feel like that's it. It's only to a certain extent. Because I feel like some people, they envision things in different ways. Like you, it feels like your envisioning is all tied into those types of experiences. I mean, right? like, if there was an apple in that video and you said it the apple, <laughs> yeah. I bet I could. It'd be a perfect five out of five. Yeah, I don't, again, again I'm, as you said that, I tried to envision an apple. And I was like, the problem is I know what an apple looks like. Right. So anything I try to envision is me just, my me telling my brain, here's an apple. Rather yeah. than, like, seeing it in my mind's eye, I'm just like, here's an apple. I'm like, oh, oh okay. See, mine is, like. Kind of like that, like if they're like envision an apple, I get like a two or a three where I'm like, I see the apple, it's not like very colored, and I'm like, whatever. But then, if I like try to envision something I'm having fun with where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to create some crazy shit. I'm like, there's a turkey, he's got like a katana, and he's like cutting down bamboo, and he's like yelling at the clouds. Like, I can envision that. Sure. But... If, if somebody tells me what to envision, like envision a pencil, I, can, I, I like struggle to do that more, but I can kind of do it. But I can I can envision things that I create. Like if I'm like, this is what I want to envision, like a leprechaun, you know, running around a track and he's got like uh, like Olympic gear on. I can envision that like easily. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess because you're using your imagination more. And you're creating the leprechaun running around the track rather than the confines of an apple. Yeah, that's a, yeah, I think so. It has to it has to come from my imagination in order for me to envision it better. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. And I'm sure there's people that like have the opposite where they can't really create stuff, but they can envision things really powerfully. But that sounds worse to me. You know, that is a, that is an interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Thank God I don't have the problem. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, so I got two more things. We're getting, we're going crazy here. I'm, I'll go through them fast. One radio ads. Terrible. Agreed. You don't even have to <laughs> agreed. Yeah. Literally we were driving the breakfast the other day. We put on Christmas music station. Like, Oh, it's Christmas music. And then it was like nonstop ads. They played one Christmas song and then we had to go into the restaurant. We got out of the restaurant, turned it on more ads. And then by the time we were like two minutes from home, they played like one more Christmas song. And I was like, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Could just play a Spotify playlist at that point. Yeah, I'm. The thing is, is I was like, man, do I do I buy Spotify? Because now I'm like, <laughs> <sighs> I'll 
I pay right. for Spotify just because I go to the gym, so I have all my like wub wubs on there. That's what I'm saying. Like I use it enough now that I'm like, should I pay? Keep getting commercials. Should I just pay for this? It's a problem. I have too many accounts with things. It's yeah. out of con- I've had to go through and cancel stuff. I went through and was like, why do I still have this account? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's too much. I did that too, especially like they had like HBO. I was like, I don't even use this. I was like, cancel that, and then they're like, but do you want HBO for like one dollar for three months? And I was like, all right, <laughs> I'll do that. But then they hook you in again. They hope you forget. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. And I, I had a um, I had an account for oh, what the hell is that shit called? Uh, Xbox Gold Pass or whatever. Right. Uh, and I had it because. I went to an event where they gave me a year free. And then all of a sudden I see a charge for like a hundred some bucks for a year's worth of Xbox. I'm like, what the hell? And I just forgot that I had, that I got it for free. And so I had to cancel it. And it was like, all right, you've canceled it, but enjoy your, your year. I'm like, oh <laughs> yeah. my God. It's like, yeah, can I just, they, that's how they get you pro rate and not <laughs> like, Oh, come on guys. And then the final thing I had, which truly dies into this podcast. Black Friday sucks even more so than last year. I completely agree. I have been let down by Black Friday for many years, as we've discussed on this show. Mm. It has gotten... Here's the thing. There aren't sales anymore. Yeah. If anything, we learned from this year, all the TikTok videos, all the things I'm seeing online... People are just going to stores, removing the, the sale item price, and then underneath it is the original price. It's the exact same <laughs> yeah, price. Exactly. It's all it's all bullshit now. When before it was like, I'm going to fight you for this $19 DVD player. Now, <laughs> the all you know, it all sucks. I don't know. And it's, it's all depressing. spread out. It's not even a day anymore. It's like a month. Yeah. It's like Black Friday month. They're like, it's starting early and it ends late. It's like, it's not even Black Friday anymore. The whole point and was, it was like, like Cyber Monday. Monday. Can't <laughs> buy it online? Cyber Monday. And you're like, cool. It's, here's the thing. It's great for the employees. You know, they don't have to deal with all the, the shit and everything. That's great. I mean, they just, they shouldn't be working anyway if that's, yeah. if the, it's not going to be a special thing. Exactly. And you know what? The one uh, Thanksgiving that we thought about, we were like, maybe we go to like Target or something. Nobody was open. So I was like, hey, you know what? Even though I wanted to go, this is good for the the employees. They don't have to work. They probably don't got to work till like 6 a.m. or something. That's great. However, yeah. it sucks for people like us <laughs> to report on this and get entertainment out of it. Uh, here's the thing. I'm all right with it. You know what? It sucks <laughs> that we don't have any people trampling people, but I guess people aren't getting trampled. And so it's fine. Yeah. Honestly, you can probably it's, just find people getting trampled somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so hard. many other tramplings happening that you don't need it to happen at Black Friday. Yeah. It's uh, it's definitely one of those things where like it felt like a day where you're like, dude, I'm going to get so many great deals. This will be fun. Now it's just like the deals aren't even good. So it's like, I don't even care. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. You know what is in heartbreaking? <laughs> These amazing deals that we have for you because today... We're sponsored by Me Undies. Falls in full effect, and you want to be your coziest and comfiest, and nothing is going to get you quite as cozy, quite as comfy. Oh, I couldn't even speak there. Quite <laughs> as cozy <laughs> as the softest, most breathable underwear and loungewear ever. Me Undies. If you're listening to us, you know that we have for some time been big fans of Me Undies. We've been talking about forever. And um, if you're not wearing them right now, if they aren't comforting your sweet, sweet tush, what are you doing? With designs ranging from classic undies to crazy modern wild designs, there's an undie for everyone. It's made just for you. With magical micro modal fabric from sizes extra small to 4XL, there's something for everyone. If you're not happy with your first pair, it's on me undies. Uh, right now, the MeUndies that I have on me are uh, like a holiday print. It's very cute. It's um, I'm trying to what is that called when it's like the black and red stripe thing? I can't remember what it's called. The black and red stripe. Oh, like the Christmas black and red checker print type thing. Yeah, yeah, whatever. That's it has a name. I just don't know what it's called. But that's Ooh, my pants. My that's name. what I'm wearing. Yo, 
Bondi Bros. Yeah, <laughs> it snowed today, so I was like, I'm in a Christmas mood. I'll put these up. That's what I'm saying. They got one for every mood you could possibly have, and you and I at this point have <laughs> so many. Mm -hmm. To try it out for the first time and get your first pair for 25% off plus free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash Cox. That's MeUndies.com slash Cox for 25% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. Also, we're sponsored by NordVPN. If you plan on doing a lot of traveling or logging into the internet from a cafe or at a public event, maybe you're wishing you could catch streaming services, but for your own country, if you're out of the country, maybe you want to check on another country's streaming services. Who knows? NordVPN can help with all of that. Look, we all spend time on the internet. You're, you're probably doing it right now, most likely. And with all your data and information just out there, it pays to be safe. A VPN uses encryption to scramble all your internet data so that, you know, your IP address or the online activity that you're doing can't just be snooped on. By doing so, it ensures your data cannot be deciphered even if someone manages to get a hold of it. Like we all know, our internet service providers monitor everything we do. It's just what happens. Well, if you want a little more control and a little less, how does the internet know what my shopping habits are? NordVPN is here for you. When it comes to streaming services, if you're traveling to Europe, for example, as I do from time to time, a VPN can help you access your favorite show back in the States that isn't on a streaming service overseas. Or have you ever noticed that sometimes when you're streaming, it seems like it's a little slower. It feels like your ISP is throttling your bandwidth. Well, NordVPN can hide your internet activity from your internet service provider to prevent that throttling right now. Give it a shot at nordvpn.com slash cox. That's n-o-r-d-v-p-n.com slash cox to get extra subscription time. And if you do so right now, you'll get 30 days money back guarantee. Again, that's nordvpn.com slash cox. Try it today. And then Uncommon Goods continues to sponsor this show this holiday season. We're past Black Friday. As we said, it's time to get the gifts for your friends, for your family. The shopping season is officially kicking off. And if you want to find something unique, something that's special that makes people say, where did you find this? Uncommon Goods is the place for you. Whether you're shopping for mom, dad, teenagers, in-laws, or your best friends, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. Right now, they've got their Cyber Monday deals going on. When I say that they have something for everyone, they really do. Here's just an example I pulled randomly from the Cyber Monday deals. Not the entire site, just Cyber Monday. A nitro cold brew maker, which, you know, I love me some cold brew. I was looking at that. A set of two planters I actually own that are cute little dudes. Uh, one's like a little, there's like a blue one, a little red one. They're little smiley faces, very cute. A fun interactive treasure hunt you could do for the whole family. Beautiful scarves and sweaters and winter clothing. Kitchenware, a lot of really fun kitchen stuff that uh, is a little wacky and out there. There's even a chocolate tasting for two. When you shop on Common Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. These are fine products made in small batches, so you want to buy them before they sell out this holiday season. There's also Uncommon Experiences, which are more than virtual classes. They're unexpected opportunities to have fun and connect in new ways, from a, a tarot card reading to romantic map making, uh, cooking, mixology classes, and more. And every time you buy something on Uncommon Goods, they give a dollar to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've already donated over two and a half million dollars to date. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash cox. That's uncommongoods.com slash cox for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. All right, let's go to Chapter Covers and the Gather Crender. How's that traffic out there? Oh boy, traffic. Let me tell you, it's crazy. There's so many traveling people for Thanksgiving, going to Thanksgiving, coming back from Thanksgiving. Uh, it's cold out there. Uh, it's gonna, it's just gonna get crazier. Holiday season, man. Holiday season. You know what it is. It's that holiday season. Back to you. You sang the Rebecca Black version of. <laughs> It's holiday, holiday, <laughs> holiday season. 
Yeah, you had a, you had a thing going on there for sure. By the way, did you know at the uh, the last place we went to for Cox and Crendor Live, the uh, the Lincoln, not the Lincoln Hall, but the the recent one? Uh huh. In the bathroom, uh, there's a thing that said Rebecca Black was here, and I'm pretty sure Rebecca Black performed where we performed. I'm letting you know that's awesome. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like well deserved. For yeah. us, yeah, we're making it. We really are. I'm, I'm very impressed by, you know, we're up there with with such amazing talent. Yeah, we got, we got to get down on Friday. Yeah, when we did, and we did, sir, and we did. That's the traffic. All right, let's go to weather. Ooh, weather time. Weather time. Weather time. Uh, we have a request for Rupert, Idaho. Check it Rupert, out. Rupert, Idaho. Rupert, Idaho. Check out A- Acapulco for the best Mexican food. Fun fact, the city turns into Christmas City, USA during the holidays. Currently in Rupert, Idaho. I'll activate Wappy. <laughs> Wappy activated. Eight degrees. Fahrenheit, Rupert, Idaho, Hayes. Chai. Low 7 degrees. Humidity, 81%. Pressure, 30.56 inches. Visibility, 2 miles. Winds, 2 miles per hour. 7.39 a.m. sunrise. 5.04 p.m. sunset. Dew point, 3 UV index, 0 of 11, moon phase, full moon, full. 10 day, beep, beep, 5 degrees currently, Monday, 32, partly cloudy, Tuesday, 35, sunny, Wednesday, 32, mostly cloudy, Thursday, 31, mostly cloudy, Friday, 31, mostly cloudy, Saturday, 33, mostly cloudy, Sunday, 35, snow to rain, Monday, 39, rain, snow, showers. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about uh, Acapulco. So finding this <laughs> restaurant, not hard, because there's roughly six that I can see in the entire city. I also see that there's just one one big road going through this city. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, welcome to the, like... N- what mid? It, I don't know. Does this count as Midwest? I guess. Actually, this would probably be literal Midwest because it's like the mid and then a bit west. Yeah, but I feel like this is. Aren't these the Plains states? They, they have a yeah. they have a name. The great the but, open um, plains. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Acapulco. This. You know how I know this place is good. Hmm. The menu is written on a whiteboard, <laughs> and then there's a bunch of photos around it. There is no real menu, as far as I can tell. In fact, the actual restaurant sign looks like it's <laughs> they wrote it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely does. That's so good. It, it looks like they kind of forgot how to spell Acapulco and then fit it in at the last minute. <laughs> yeah. That's like we can't redo this. You got this is the, the final copy. Uh, yeah, I can tell this place is delicious because it looks like and this is a thing that we've done every time we've gone somewhere. If the outside looks like they definitely sell drugs on the inside, <laughs> that place has amazing food. 100%, yes. Acapulco, the outside, looks like <laughs> it should not be good. But all the food, I'm like, yeah, I'd mess with this in The a thing is, like, the people that get these places, they, they're passionate about food, and they're just like, dude, I just want to, like, sell my food. So they just get, like, this, the lowest cost place so they can put all their effort into the food. I'm looking at, uh, there's an angled shot of the entrance When you walk in, there is a little glass counter that looks like they probably sold Chotskis or something. This wasn't a Mexican (laughs) restaurant before. I have to believe that. (laughs) Yeah. And that little (laughs) counter. And then there's a snapper cooler with a bunch of drinks in it. And then behind this little glass counter is the menu, which I'm telling you, is one fourth of a whiteboard (laughs) with a bunch of stuff written on it. And then images of things. And then there's another whiteboard on top of the Snapple thing with breakfast options. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie. I dig it. <laughs> Hold on. I zoomed out. I was like, 
I, there's got to be some crazy shit here. I saw the Flamingo Lodge Motel. And what? the Flamingo Lodge Motel. Uh, one of the reviews said, horrible, nasty place, has no phone. And the one above that said, five out of five, Flamingo Tell Motel, more like the War of 1812 Motel, am I right? I saw a dead Victorian-era child in the vents, and it asked for licorice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Then he said, who likes licorice? Dead kids from the War of 1812. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave it a five out of five. Yeah, I don't, uh, uh, what's <laughs> crazy about this is if you actually go scroll out, like full on scroll out, right. it, it, street view too, mm -hmm. across the street from Acapulco is potentially... A pl plant of some sort processing something. <laughs> a road that looks like it is permanently under construction. Yeah. And then there behind it is a trailer park. This, it yes. really has middle of nowhere vibes. Yeah. Oh my God. Even the place next to it. It's just like some mechanic shack. It just says breaks AC tune up in like, in like painter's tape. And but it also, just says Misty's. Yeah, but also there's la. Uh, oh boy, I can't read that. I don't know what that says. La uh, something Chiquita two. It looks like a supermarket. I can't read what it says. Um, but it, it's like a Spanish language supermarket. Do you think the place across the street that looks like a processing plant is this one of those things we're going to find out that a lot of Mexican immigrants live here because of either chicken or cow or pork, like. They're, they're uh, maybe. farm working, and yeah. so that's why there's a lot of Mexican restaurants here. Probably why there's also a lot of good Mexican restaurants, because yeah. it's actually like people who know what they're doing, uh, and that's probably why they all live here. It could explain the um, trailer park across the street from this processing plant, too. Yeah, because there's a lot of Mexican restaurants. There's like five more re Mexican restaurants in like middle of nowhere Idaho. It's weird. I mean, I guess, I guess potentially not. that's... Yeah, I mean, maybe that's because they're all... Because this is kind of, it's in the middle of nowhere. It is middle of nowhere. <laughs> if there's like one main, ro main road, that's that's pretty much middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, especially if that road is named like North Meridian, but North Meridian becomes S.A. Street and then turns into a numbered street the further you go. <laughs> like, that's definitely, and that, yeah, and then there's Route 24 or something runs through it. And then there's railroads because the railroads pick up all the produce or whatever, the right. cow bits or something. Interesting. I wonder what Rupert's known for. What do they process? There's the E Street Deli. Wait, this has 4.8 out of 5? Yo, the E Street Deli looks pretty good. It just looks like it looks like a solid ass deli. Yeah. The, you know why I know that you like this? Because it's got weird, like, it sells also sells socks. <laughs> And ice cream. I didn't even see that. You know what I love about this? What? Is uh they also have the uh uh in the bathrooms, it's it's a gender neutral bathroom, and it just says whatever, just wash your hands. <laughs> I'm like, that's a good attitude to have. <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh yeah, this place the ice cream looks delicious. Yeah. They clearly are making their own bread and sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Their own yeah, mac and great. cheese. I love how the photo of beer they have is a stock photo of beer. Like, we also sell <laughs> oh, beer. <yeah. laughs> but again, the, the E Street Deli appears to be on a street with, like, it's a barren, it's a barren street. Yeah. That's... But it, but I guess not. It's like downtown, but it's a, uh, like, old school downtown. Is that, like, you know, like, yeah. old middle America downtown yeah. where it's one street and everything's on that street. And if you're looking for something else, it's not on that street. Okay, hold on. I found cozy coffee. All right, and you need to see. You need to see this man. I think it'll it'll bring you to him when I link you that. <laughs> <laughs> that guy <laughs> screams. I've lived here my entire life. But 100%. also, two cigars in his pocket. He's a baller. That's it. <laughs> two cigars in his pocket. And it looks like I don't know what he's holding. It looks like a gavel. Or like a sausage on a stick. I don't know which one it is. They definitely have some sort of uh, 
on a stick theme. Because if you scroll up, there's people eating, I think it's cake pops on a stick, but they look oh, like yeah. actual real ass cake pops that a person made yes. instead of the Starbucks ones. Yeah. I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I went. There's a place called Sophie's Chatterbox that's just oh, yeah. down the street. It looks like a standard diner. The pancakes have smiley faces. That's a, you gotta have smiley face pancakes. You gotta and have or a smiley Mickey face. Mouse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, this is wild. It it, it reminds like even when I lived in Ohio, you'd have to go. Pre- I lived in in Dayton, so you have right. to go pretty far out to find this type of things. This is like even Youngstown, which I thought was pretty. Well, there's nothing here. This is even smaller than that. This is pretty wild. Yeah. This again, is you like, kind of forget. You kind of forget. Yeah. Like a lot oh of America's like, especially when you live in like cities like we do. Yeah. Mad yes. River Laser. What the hell is Mad River Laser? Oh, what? It's laser engraved items. Interesting. What? Oh, yeah, I see. Like hats and little bags and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 100%, I was looking this up. There's a lot of cattle based things. Uh, farms for, there's, Dairy services and dairy this and dairy that. Um, yeah, a lot of farms, a lot of cow stuff. So I feel like the reason why there's a lot of... Ma- yeah, so, oh, this is perfect. If you drive up that the 24, it's all farms. Uh, yeah. So the minute you leave the city, you get outside of the city, Rupert, it's all farms all the way up. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Oh, yeah, look at that. There you go up. Yeah, it's just a bunch of like small little towns. Yeah, probably where people had to, you know, well, we got to park here because this is where this is the fastest way to get to the, you know, farm. We're going to work there. It makes sense. Yeah. Where's uh? what's the capital? Isn't it Boise, Idaho is the capital? Of Idaho? Yeah, Boise. Boise would be mm. northwest. Oh, yeah, there it is. Northwest. I want to see. Yeah. I mean, like. Boise's a city city. It's not like a crap city. Yeah, Boise's a city city. Yeah, they got a bunch of stuff. Yeah, it's just interesting to me that it's one of those places where Idaho is one of those places very much like Wyoming or Montana or the Dakotas. Mm-hmm. They all fall in that. There's usually one or two huge cities, then everything else is like six people living in a hut. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like everything <laughs> yeah. outside of that, of the city is like, wait, <laughs> people live out here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> same thing with Nevada. Nevada's the same. There's Vegas, and then I guess Reno, you could count maybe. But then everything else is just like, wait a minute. House is a town. There's like four people living here. It's like, it's a town. And our, <laughs> sheriff, our sheriff's the dog. You're like, okay. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's kind of like Chicago. There's like Chicago, the Chicago area, and then it's just like farm life. <laughs> Like the rest of Illinois is just farms, but like Chicago itself is millions of people. So it's like, I mean, like the best, the best way to picture it is here's just a stock photo of, uh, earth at night based on lights. Like, just look Mm -hmm. at this thing. This is, you can see that when you finally like East coast lit up, (laughs) but the further West you go, except for California, uh, and Washington and Oregon, there's the big city in your state, and then nothing. You can see Idaho, yeah. even though it's not mapped out. You can see Boise, and then everything else around it, there's nothing. From space, yeah. it's like, no, nah, there ain't nobody there. <laughs> that actually is pretty crazy. Like, that entire Middle West area is just, like, no lights. That's because it's all huge farms, and, uh, you know, it's where we feed the country, basically. Yeah. Um, but also, not really. A lot of it is, like... Where we grow way too much corn so we can put it in a bunch of shit that nobody wants anymore. Dude, you gotta you gotta grow that corn. In fact, I watched a thing about like farmers in Illinois, like Chicago, like outside Chicago. So I was like, what? Because this guy's like, I drove out of the city. And then he talked to some farmer in like southern Illinois and he's like, Yep, I sell my corn. He's like, Oh, where do you sell it to? Chicago? And he's like, Nah, I sell it to China. <laughs> Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I didn't even realize. He's like, yeah, we just sell the corn to China. I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> there was, I, I don't know what happened, but there was some sort of incentive a while ago where the government was trying to get people to make a lot of corn and things. A lot of, like, a lot of the soybeans and stuff we grow, we sell overseas. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff we do that you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? So, 
Yeah, I don't quite understand it, but I'm no farmer, and I don't blame them for trying to make a buck. But, uh, yeah. It, yeah, it's crazy when you look at a map and you see the country and you realize that the vast majority of the population of the U.S. lives on the East Coast and sort of middle where Illinois would be and down. Yeah. And then after Texas, it starts to fizzle off, and then it hits the West Coast, and it's bright as hell. <laughs> yeah. It's the whole coast. Yeah, it's just very weird to me, but that's the nature of the country, I suppose. There's probably people listening, and they're just like, these damn city folk. <laughs> they, you know what? They're right. I, I yeah. didn't fully admit I am in damn city. Like, when I look at some places, I'm just like, how? Yeah. I mean, uh, I literally grew up, like, he, being able to hear if my neighbors were, like, throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> he opened the window. You could hear him having the flu or some shit. Like, now, I, can't, I can't even imagine, like, being like, yeah, our neighbors are, like, 800 yards away. Like, what? That's, that's that crazy. genuinely scares me. I, it scares I me, I love too. apartments. I, I When I grew up, even in Ohio, my neighbors were close, right? Mm -hmm. we, we were almost on top of each other. And when I live in an apartment, I'm fine because I know there are people around me, and, they're like, for some reason, it's comforting. Mm -hmm. Me plus woods plus cabin equals terrified the entire time. I agree. It freaks me out. Some people love that. They're like, yeah, I'm on the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. Nobody's near me. It's like peaceful. I'm like, I'm uh, like, what if something happens? What if there's like a crazy person? You're just. Uh, oh, I'm <laughs> I'm like, there's definitely gonna be a crazy person. It's going to happen. It's yeah. going to happen. What if you, what uh, if something like a, like you have a heart attack, you're, you know, you're just like, well, you're dead. So anyway, that's the weather. That <laughs> that's the weather. All right. Let's go to Sports. Sports. Oh boy, sports. It's been a lot of sports happening. So in terms of football, we had a Thanksgiving football where the Packers, unbelievable victory. Very great over the Detroit Lions. It was very fun. Uh, Washington losing to Dallas. San Francisco beating Seattle. You had Miami beating the New York Jets. You had Atlanta beating New Orleans. Pittsburgh beating Cincinnati. Tennessee beating Carolina, Indianapolis over Tampa Bay, Giants beating New England, Jacksonville over Houston, Denver over Cleveland, Rams over Cardinals, Kansas City over Las Vegas, Philadelphia beating Buffalo in overtime. That game is crazy. And Baltimore mm -hmm. over the Chargers in hockey. We got the Bruins at the top, the Rangers at the top, the Avalanche at the top, and the Golden Knights at the top. And in basketball, we have the Celtics up top, uh, the Timberwolves in first place. Wow, the Timberwolves, that's pretty crazy. And the Thunder right behind them. And the Magic and the Bucks behind the Celtics. Wow, the Magic, what the shit? That's pretty crazy. Uh, and that is sports. Okay. What is our fact of the day? Our fact of the day is, I literally, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I forgot to look up a fact of the day, so I typed in fact of the day into Google, and it gave me a thing that said, how old was Mozart when he started to compose music? And it says, by the time, Six. Well, close, by the time he was five years old, Mozart had complete mastery of keyboards and violin and had written his first five compositions. At six, he toured Europe. As a child prodigy, by 16, he'd already written three operas and 25 symphonies. Damn, what are you doing with your life, man? <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. At five years old, I was like, I go to school now. <laughs> like, oh my God. I mean, I guess he really didn't have much else to do, though. You know what I mean? Like, what else was he going to yeah, do? Yeah, it's true. It's like, what, 1700s? Britain or whatever? <laughs> Nobody yeah, like, what, what else was he going to do? <laughs> nothing. Yeah, nothing to do. Um... So there's your fact of the day. <laughs> All right. Let's go to our big news story of the day. Big news story of the day. Day, 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 day. Uh, this one's tied into what we talked about earlier. At the adventure style scavenger hunt McDonald's once held for golden McRibs. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. What? Golden McRibs? I don't even know what that Golden means. Golden McRibs. It's fall, which means it's the greatest time of the year. McRib season. McDonald's has many classic products, but there's probably not one that inspires more adamant debate on both sides of the aisle. 
Some people may poo-poo it, claiming it looks like middle school cafeteria food, but those of us that know realize the McRib is in fact a gift sent from pork heaven. I don't know about that. This yeah, irregular- I don't know if I would... <laughs> <laughs> this irregular menu item appears and disappears from McDonald's menus seemingly at whim, always creating a social media stir. Part of the reason it does is because of how McDonald's promotes it. Each time, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but, the since no one is buying... Wait, each time it appears, McDonald's claims it's the last time we'll see. That's true. Since no one is buying that after the restaurant has cried wolf so many times, the company sometimes has to get a little more creative. Over a decade ago, it had one of its more unusual ideas. A contest involving golden McRibs. That's right. Willy Wonka McRibs. I don't know what that means, though. I, I, <laughs> all right, I'm not going to look it up. I, I keep wanting to look up what a gold... Like, you can keep saying golden McRib <laughs> like that makes sense. But mm -hmm. is it made of gold? Is it colored gold? What, don't, I don't why know. Why would you eat it? I, uh, I have so many questions. So it says, 2011's Quest for the Golden McRib Contest was inspired by the golden tickets that form the basis of Roald Dahl's novel, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That ended great for all the contestants. I think all almost all those kids died. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Just like people that eat McRib. Yeah. And the subsequent movie based on it titled Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. In the film... Kids who find a special golden ticket in their chocolate bars get a free tour of the blah, blah, blah. It's Willy Wonka. Uh, but it didn't really work like that. There weren't McRibs wrapped in edible gold foil or anything, but it was clearly intended to provide some of the interactivity of that idea, even going as far to take the movie's same whimsical tone, describing it as your weirdly wonderful journey in advertisements. The promotion was essentially a Facebook game that utilize Google Maps integration to oh, allow customers... Never mind, this sucks. <laughs> this sucks. I hate this. This does suck. To locate virtual golden McRibs at nearby McDonald's. Most rewards for participating involve badges and achievements on a customer's user profile. There's also no. the chance of winning an arch card worth $500 of McRibs. No. <laughs> this sucks. This sucks. <laughs> The McRib is fascinatingly odd product because there's no other fast food menu item quite like it. Various other fast food spots have canceled and brought back menu items in response to fan outcry like the Taco Bell Mexican pizza, but it's hard to find one that comes and goes with the frequency of the McRib, uh, other than maybe the Shamrock Shake. In part of this, because there's nothing quite like the McRib on any fast food menu. It has a very specific flavor and texture thanks to a dizzying number of ingredients... Maybe we should expect that, though, since the McRib, much like the McNugget, originally came about as an experiment of U.S. military meat. Stop. That's the news story. You're telling yeah, me the McRib the was developed by the military? Yeah, it says how the U.S. military's meat research helped birth McDonald's McRib. What? I I'm blown away by this. Yeah, hold on. Let me pivot to this one. And then... Uh, <laughs> Fast food menu, okay. Contrary to popular belief in urban legend, the McRib is not made of whatever gets scraped off the slaughterhouse floor. The McRib's construction contains a shocking number of ingredients and itself is the intense experiment experimentation in food science. Somehow, though, the story is even more bizarre. The creation of the McRib is based on military research. This wasn't because the army was developing some sort of pork bomb. They were, however, cooking up something much less explosive, restructured meat. In the 1960s, research scientists... <laughs> Restructured meat. <laughs> they, they sought to solve the cost efficiency problem in MREs, or meals ready to eat. Sure. To this end, they devised the novel idea. What if they took edible but generally discarded cuts of meat left aside during food processing and found a way to recompress them into a solid structure using animal protein as meat glue? It's easy to forget... But chicken McNuggets weren't always part of the menu. The restaurant's chain or origins as a barbecue restaurant meant the burgers were always its bread and butter. McNuggets weren't even created until 1979, and the technology for them wouldn't have existed during the early years. Their efforts bore fruit, though, not necessarily in the way they intended. In 1979, in response to rising beef prices and the release of government dietary suggestions that Americans eat fewer cows, McDonald's created the McNugget out of restructured chicken meat. But they didn't stop there. The problem was McNuggets were so popular, they, shut up, they set off a chicken shortage. 
So the company sought to create another beef alter alternative using the same methods, and the McRib was born using pork shoulder and meat glue. Pork shoulder and meat glue are just some of the fun <laughs> ingredients. I'm looking this up. This is amazing. Amazing. All right. In a McRib. <laughs> yeah. First off, the ribs aren't actually real pork ribs, but instead ground up and emulsified pork meat. Mm-hmm. Largely coming from the pork shoulder and possibly the rectum. Ooh. The ribs contain multiple preservatives, <laughs> dextrose, and liquid smoke, and then they're dipped in the barbecue sauce. But also included to make sure they can last a long time are soil fertilizer salts, trans fats, the flour and flour bleaching agents, which are the same bleaching agents used in yoga mats. <laughs> yep. The, that's the Subway special. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and I guess there's much more that goes into it. So, yeah, once a year sounds exactly correct. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm glad that's what I had. I'm glad, you know what? I'm glad I put that in my body. <laughs> we take for granted now that McRib is popular anytime it shows up. <laughs> but when it debuted in 1981, it was just a regular menu item. Uh, we don't actually know why the company keeps bringing the McRib back occasionally rather than keeping it full time. But we do know that without the efforts of the military industrial complex, we wouldn't know the McRib every fall season. Well, that's great. <laughs> that's just lovely. <laughs> that is fantastic. All right. Well, that's it for us. Crandor, hit him with the socials. Oh, boy. We got socials. First, go buy my crocky at makeship.com. Links in the description. Also, YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox, YouTube.com slash Crendor, Twitch Jesse Cox, Twitch Crendor, Facebook Jesse Cox, Facebook Crendor, Patreon Jesse Cox, Patreon Crendor, TikTok Jesse Cox, TikTok, TikTok Crendor. Uh, still doing the pink starburst. Go check it out. Uh, uh, Instagram, Notorious Cox, Instagram, Crendor was taken. Uh, Cren Clips, Cox Clips on YouTube. Uh, e, uh, ooh, uh, uh, ting, tang, walla walla, bing, bang. X.com, Jesse, or <laughs> you tried. Cred, Twitter, Crendor, Jesse Cox, whatever. Just go to YouTube.com, whatever. All right. Well, that's it, that's it for us. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, shake the rhino to be continued. Uh.